William Paul Thurston said, Mathematics is not about numbers, equations, computations, or algorithms. It is about understanding. Good day to all of you. I am Miss Agnesco and I'll be your math teacher for the day. For this lesson, we will be talking about functions and relations. First, what is function and relation? Relation is a rule that relates values from set of values called domain to a second set of values called the range. Take note that the elements of the domain can be imagined as input to a machine that applies a rule to these inputs to generate one or more outputs. On the other hand, Function is defined as the relation, where each element in the domain is related to only one value in the range by some rule. Note that elements of the domain can be imagined as input to a machine that applies a rule to these inputs to correspond to only one output. Is it confusing? Don't worry, as you go along, you are going to understand the concept of functions and relations. What do you see on the screen? Yes, this image is a function machine. A function machine is an imaginary device that receives inputs and generates outputs. A number or input is put into a machine and is transformed into a second number, the output, through the application of a rule. Here are some examples. Our input is 5 and our rule is multiplied by 2. 5 multiplied by 2 is 10, so 10 is our output. Do you get it? Okay, don't worry. Here's another example. Our input is 5 and the rule is squared. 5 squared is 25, so our output is 25. Do you now get it? Easy, right? Do you know that there are types of relations? Yes, you heard me. In fact, there are four types of relations. First, we have one-to-many. One-to-many is a type of cardinality that refers to the relationship between two entities, A and B, in which an element of A may be linked to many elements of B, but a member of B is linked to only one element of A. Second type of relation is many-to-many. Many-to-many is a type of cardinality that refers to the relationship between two entities, say A and B, where A may contain a parent instance for which there are many children in B, and vice versa. Third type of relation is one-to-one. One-to-one -one is a type of cardinality that refers to the relationship between two entities, A and B, in which one element of A may be linked to one element of B and vice versa. Fourth and the last type of relation is many-to-one. Many-to-one is a relationship between more than one instances of an entity which one instance of another entity. Remember that all functions are relation, but not all relations are function. One-to-one -one and many-to-one -one relations can be considered as functions. There are different ways of expressing functions and relations. First, we can express it as a set of ordered pairs. Ordered pairs is composed of two coordinates, the x-coordinate or the abscissa and the y-coordinate or also known as ordinate. What do you call a set of all x-coordinates? It is called as domain. How about a set of all y-coordinates? It is called as range. How do we consider set of ordered pairs a function? 
we consider set of ordered pairs a function if every element in the set is composed of different x and y coordinates. No common x coordinates exist in the given set. Here are the examples in determining whether a given order pairs is a function or a relation. Here we have 1 and 2, 2 and 4, 3 and 6, 4 and 8, 5 and 10. Note that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the domain or the set of all x coordinates. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 is the range or the set of all y coordinates. Just like the function machine that I have discussed a while ago, the x is the input while the y is the output. In determining whether the ordered pairs are function, we need to know the rule that fits the output. Is it confusing? Let me give you an example. The given ordered pairs is 1 and 2, 2 and 4, 3 and 6, 4 and 8, 5 and 10. We need to find a rule that fits the y coordinates. Can you guess the rule? That's right. The rule is y is twice x. It means we have to multiply x by 2 to get y. 1 times 2 is equals to 2. That explains 1 and 2. 2 times 2 is equals to 4. That explains 2 and 4. Now, it's time for you to try to solve it yourselves. Maybe you're asking me, Ma'am, how do we know if the ordered pair is a relation or a function? Don't worry. Figuring whether the ordered pairs is a relation or function is as easy as pi. Now, can you spot the difference? The first one is a function, and the second one is a relation. Relations have repeated x-coordinates, while y is not. See? It's easy. Now, let's proceed to the examples. Determine whether the given ordered pairs is a function or relations. Here we have 2 and 1, 4 and 2, 6 and 3, 8 and 4. The given is a function because the x coordinate is not repeated. The rule that applies to these ordered pairs is y is divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. That explains 2 and 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. That explains 4 and 2. Now it's time for you to try to solve it yourself. Another example. What do you think about this? Is it a function or a relation? That's right. It's a relation because the x is repeated. The question is, what is the rule? The rule is y squared is equal to x, which means 4 squared is equal to 16, which explains 16 and 4. 3 squared is equal to 9, which explains 9 and 3. Here's another example. Even though that there are two sevens, this is a function. Take note of the signs. There is a negative sign in the other 7, so both are different from each other. Are you having a hard time looking for the rule? It is because this ordered pair do not have a rule. The rule is not applicable. Here we have our fourth example. This is a function. The rule is y is equal to x multiplied by negative 10. 1 times negative 10 is equal to 10, which explains 1 and negative 10. 3 times negative 10 is equal to negative 30, 
which explains 3 and 30, and so on. Now, the last example. This is a function. The rule for this is y is equal to x plus 3, which means we need to add the x coordinates with 3. Therefore, negative 1 plus 3 is equal to 2, which explains the negative 1 and 2. The second way in expressing functions and relations is called table of values. The set of ordered pairs can be written as a table of values still composed of x and y coordinates. X coordinates is written in the first row and below is the y coordinates. Note that a table of values is a function if there are no common coordinates in the row of x coordinates. Here we have the first example. As you can see, there are no repeated x values, so this is a function. Here are second Example, in this case, we need to put the plus minus sign if you can see our coordinate with either positive or negative sign. Now, try to arrange this third example. Here we can see that there are no common x coordinates, so this is a function. How about this fourth example? What have you observed? Why do you think that instead of having 6 row, it became only 3? This is an example of a relation order pairs. Instead of writing it one by one, we place the plus minus sign to shorten it. Confused? Don't worry, we will still have another example. Now, it's time for you to solve it on your own. If your answer is the same in the table, then good job. We will now proceed to the mappings. Do you have an idea what mapping is? Function can be written a mapping in which x coordinate is in the left side and y coordinates on the right side. The first example is 1 to 1 and this is a function. Another one is many to one and this is also a function. The third example is one to many and it is not a function. The fourth and the last is many to many and this is not a function. Next is graph. Graph is a vertical line test that can be used in order to determine if a graph is a function or merely a relation. But, how do we use a vertical line test? First, we have to draw a vertical line passing through the graph in the rectangular coordinate plane. Then, we have to determine the number of points of intersection between the graph and the vertical line. Remember, a graph is a function if there is only one point of intersection between the graph and the vertical line. If there are more than one points of intersection, then the graph is a relation. Here we have our first example. There is only one point of intersection, so this is a function. How about this second one? This is a function since there is only one point of intersection. How about the next graph? Is it a function or relation? That's right, it is a relation because it has more than one point of intersection. How about this? This is a relation graph since it has two points of intersections. How about this last example? Yes. This is a function graph because it has only one point of intersection. Easy, right? Now, it's time for us to proceed to the next. We have the equation. There are things to consider in using equation in determining a function. First, we cannot consider a function, an equation if, 
there is no y in the equation, the exponent is an even number, y is in the absolute value of symbols, and the relationship is not in the equality form. Here are the examples. The given is y is equal to x squared plus 2. This is a function. The second one is x is equal to x squared minus 3. This is not a function because there is no y. x greater than y. This is not a function because there is no equality. y is equal to absolute value of x plus 3. This is a function. And the last one, y squared is equal to x plus 2 is not a function because the exponent of y is even. Did you know that functions are written in different ways? This is called as function notation. There are five ways in reading a function. First, we have image of x under f is x plus 3, or under f, x is assigned to x plus 3. The second one is read as image of x under f is x plus 3, or under f, x is assigned to x plus 3. The third one is read as the function f is the set of all ordered pairs x and y such that y equals x plus 3. The fourth one is read as f of x equals x plus 3. The last one is read as y equals x plus 3. We must remember that x is considered as an independent variable, y on the other hand is the independent variable. We must remember that x is considered as an independent variable, and y on the other hand is the dependent variable. Before using the function notation five different ways, let us learn first how to get the function. Here is one example. And one piece of advice, always start at the end. A function in which element in the range is 5 more than 5 times its corresponding element in the domain. First, we see the word element in the end of the sentence. The element pertains to y. Now we have letter y already. Second, we can see the word 5 times which pertains to 5x. Now we have x is equal to 5x. Third, we can see the word more than 5, which pertains to plus 5. Now we have x is equal to 5x plus 5, which is the final answer. Now it's time for us to use the four different ways of writing a function since we already have one. Here is another one. A function in which element in the range is 3 less than the square of its corresponding element in the domain. The element is y is equal, the square is x squared, less than 3 is minus 3. Now we have y is equal to x squared minus 3. Now it's time for us to write the other 4. Here's our third example. A function in which every element in the range is 4 decreased by twice its corresponding element in the domain. Element is y equal. 4 decreased by twice is 4 minus 2x. Now we have y is equal to 4 minus 2x. Then we need to write the other ways. Here we have our fourth example. Write the function notation in which every element in the range is twice its corresponding element in the domain in five different ways. Element is y is equal, twice is 2, element is x, now we have y is equal to 2x. Now for the last example. Write the function notation in which every element in the range is the cube of 5 less than its corresponding element in the domain. Element
element is y is equal q of 5 less than is x minus 5 cubed. Now we have y is equal to x minus 5 cubed. Next, we need to write it in four ways. Okay, this is the end of our lesson. Thank you for listening to me. Before I end this, I would like to leave a quote for all of you. Mathematics may not teach us how to breathe oxygen and how to exhale carbon dioxide or to love a friend and forgive an enemy. It may not even help us find our way to our one true love. But it gives us every reason to hope that every problem has a solution. I hope this will remind you to keep living and be positive in life. Thank you to all of you. This is Ms. Aniasko signing off. God bless.